إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمله ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يدل الله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إنه أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في البرعة وكل برعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الآية معنا اليوم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديثه أكثر الذكر هازم اللذات أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters, today we begin our khutbah with shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledging the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, and this should be the first thing in front of us. An acknowledgement and recognizing the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, and this is something why a Muslim is someone who is always in a state of awareness or should be in that state. So we send shukr and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praises to Him for His numerous bounties upon us and we send our salam and prayers and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. The reminder with us this evening or this afternoon is based on an ayah of the Qur'an in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qul inna al mawta alladhi tafiruna minhu fa innahu mulaqikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Say, O Muhammad, say the death from which you flee will truly overtake you. Thumma turadduna ila alim al ghaybi wa shahad. Then you will be sent back to the knower of all things open and secret. Fa yunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'amaloon. And he will tell you of the things that which you, did, that which you did in this world. So the topic with us here today, it's for us to remind ourselves of the inevitable thing. The thing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses or named it in the Quran or referred to it as al-yaqeen. That which is certain. The inevitable truth. The thing which of, from which there is no escape. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, أَكْثِرُ الذِّكْرُ هَاذِمُ اللَّذَاتِ يَعْنِي الْمَوْتِ أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, remember constantly. Remember constantly the destroyer of pleasures. 
يعني الموت meaning death and that is something I would like to remind us about today because my dear brothers and sisters it is something that we all know we will face in the reality as our life unfolds and it reminded and the reason why I want to remind us about this concept today is because I was reading a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him, Ya Rasulullah, when is Yawmul Qiyam? When is the day of judgment? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he retorted to him, he replied to him, he said, What have you prepared for it? What have you prepared for it? Similarly, we all know our impending end is coming. Without a doubt, even a person who doesn't believe in a God completely knows they will die. It's inarguable. You cannot argue this. We will die. Our life will come to an end. And as Muslims, as people who believe in Allah and submit to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are aware of al-akhirah, the life after death. And it is something that as believers, as human beings, we tend to live our life as though it doesn't exist. We tend to live our life as if we are living in this world for its entirety. That we will be here forever. In reality, we will live forever. However, we must pass through that gate of death before we live forever, either in bliss, in Jannah, are in complete misery in the, in the fire of hell. Na'udhu Billah. But we live our life even though we know that this portion here is but for a preparation. But we are living in a time and in a land where material gains become more prominent and more important to us than anything else. And it is something that we are reminded of every day. But today, my dear brothers and sisters, why I want us to, remind, to be reminded of this today is that when we leave here today, maybe, just maybe, some benefit might remain from this khutbah. That we may help to change the course of our life. Maybe away from Jahannam to the path of Jannah. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the person will live this life and do the actions of Jannah for his entire life. Until the time of his death nears then Qadr will overtake him and he will involve in the actions of the people of Jahannam and he will enter into Jahannam. Similarly, a person might live their life in complete sin, in complete disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a life that is constantly filled with actions of the people of Jahannam, of the people of the fire of hell, and then Qadr will overtake him before his death and he will involve in the actions of the people of Jannah and he will die and he will enter Jannah. May Allah bless us to be from among those who enter Jannah. Ameen. So therefore, it is never too late for us to change something in our life. Keep this concept in front of us. Do not wait, my young brothers and sisters. Do not wait for so that when you achieve an older age, as you might see the older brothers and sisters, they are indulged more in ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, when I get older, I will do this. Young parents, do not teach your children to think like that. Do not teach them to think they dedicate everything of their life now in preparation for a future they don't even know if they have it. This is the concept when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثِرُ الذِّكْرُ هَذِمُ Remember constantly that this thing, it destroys all pleasures of this world. Everything that we work for, Everything that we want to achieve, everything that makes us happy in this world, it comes to an end when mouth comes upon us, when death comes upon us. So how much are we preparing for our meeting with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The reality is, we should never become complacent. We should never think for a second that my standing with Allah, it's okay. That I am safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can refer back to the hadith of Rasulullah. We can do the actions of the people of Jannah our entire life. However, 
we don't know the state in which we will die. That is why in the opening khutbah, and on almost every khutbah, you will hear this ayah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what is deserving of the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except that you are one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep that in front of you. So as you're getting up and you're going out, you know, alhamdulillah, we're living in a very free land. That is, even though we are facing some challenges today with COVID-19 and the snow was yesterday, we're still working hard. We have to go to work. How many people didn't choose not to go to work today because the snow fell yesterday? How many of you will willingly give up your job because of COVID-19? No, we wouldn't. Because all of this is in the pursuing of this dunya. Yet, let us, let, me, let us ask ourselves this question. How many of us have used those same reasons for not involving in something that is even compulsory upon us? How many of us have used COVID-19 as a reason not to come to the masjid? How many of us have used COVID-19 to not spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us? We want to keep this wealth thinking that this is going to protect us if the hard times hit, we do not spend. How many of us because of COVID-19, we have kept ourselves and secluded ourselves and just involved more in the things that are hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let us ask ourselves that. Our children as they're going to school, we make all efforts so that they may establish or they may strengthen their academic proficiency. Whether it's online learning or distance learning or whatever the case may be, we know they need that so we strive to ensure that that need of them is fulfilled. But how many of us make sure that their requirements of their deen is fulfilled in their life? How many of us will make sure that they wake up for Salat al-Fajr every single morning? How many of us will make sure that they spend at least five minutes reciting Quran every single day? How many of us will make sure that our daughters wear their hijab? How many of us will ensure and train our sons to be present in the masjid every single day? Isn't that a requirement as a believer? Isn't that preparing for the thing that we all know we will face? We are faced with a society today, my dear brothers and sisters, in which people live their life as if, as if there is no akhirah. As if there is no akhirah. There is no accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even though today we have so much masajid around the world, we have so much accessibility to knowledge and training and Islamic environment, we still see more and more people turning away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially among our youth. Especially among our youth. And as elders, we might ask, oh, what is happening to our younger generation? What is happening to them? Why are they attached to the deen of Allah? When we're faced with that dilemma, my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves, what have I done to help keep them upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did I train them to make Islam most important to them? Did I train my sons to be men of this deen? Did I train my daughters to be women of this deen? Did I choose spouses that will help me strengthen my deen? Yes, it goes back to that. It goes back to how we prepare our lives for the inevitable meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, say to them, O Muhammad, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Say the death from which you flee will truly overtake you. Then you will send, be sent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادِ We can't run away from it. So no matter how much we engross in our life in this world, we cannot run away from the, from the reality of the Akhir. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is that today, whenever a person 
is being reminded of our duty of the akhirah of, of, of the reality of the akhirah of our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we try to ignore it none of us like to be reminded of our sins none of us want to be reminded of our shortcomings none of us want to be reminded of where we are not being an obedient servant to Allah and not because somebody is coming and telling you, hey, you, you committed this sin or you committed that sin. No, we don't even want to hear a general advice concerning this. You understand? Why? Because we are trying to hide from this fact that we will be accountable for this. We're thinking that, we, that sometime I probably would not have to be accountable for our actions. You know? As Muslims, as believers in Allah, we have to be meticulous about every aspect of our life. We have to know the commandments of Allah upon us. We have to know the prohibitions of Allah upon us. And that is the duty of you, 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 and me. That is not my duty or the Imam's duty to have to come and give it to you. Allah will not ask you, why didn't you do this? And he will say, oh Allah, the Imam didn't teach me this. The duty to seek knowledge. The duty to perfect our deen is upon the individual, not upon the leaders. The leaders, they have their own responsibility. And Allah will hold them to task. But Allah will hold each and every one of us to task as to how we spend our life. And the beautiful thing about this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we don't have to do many hundreds and thousands of different things. Simple. We do the things that are compulsory, which are very few. And we keep away from the things that are prohibited and we be consistent in that. Amr bi ma'roof wa nahu anil munkar. We enjoy that which is compulsory, that which is good, that which is right, and we turn away from that which is evil. And turning away from it means that even when it is, it is so beneficial for us in this world that we turn away from it because it is haram. So if you're doing your business and in conducting this business they contain elements of haram, if you truly fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah in a manner that is deserving of that taqwa, you will eliminate that from, from your business even if it costs you financially. This is where the taqwa of Allah. This is where thinking about death comes in front of you. That if you are conducted, if you are in, in an arrangement with somebody, that you do not be unjust to them. Because while that might, you might get away with that now, you're not going to get away with it in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the snow is falling, you know, a perfect example. As it snowed outside and we're cleaning our driveways, we're not going to take the snow and throw it in our neighbor's park and put that burden upon them. Think about you standing in front of Allah and having to give account for that. As young people, when you're on your social media and on the internet and your smart devices, look at, pay attention to what you're looking at and what you're seeing. And what you're talking about and what you're doing for that moment will come in front of you on the day of qiyamah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about it as a sport game is playing on your television and you're engrossed in it and you're happy about it and the time of salah is coming and going and you're missing your salah know that that moment will be shown to you on the day of qiyamah that moment will be shown to you because we, will, we don't know if we will have another opportunity to even pray another salah before our death before our death for death is ever approaching and it is not something that we can run away from so therefore I'm going to ask you my dear brothers and sisters what have you prepared for that what have you prepared and what have I prepared for this meeting with Allah Am I ready to pass through this gate to enter into eternal life in bliss? Or am I preparing my place in Jahannam? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us upon this deen of, uh, of His. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our actions to be actions of righteousness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in taqwa and awareness of Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and guide each and every one of us so that we may die in a, in a state that which, in which He is pleased to reach us and we are pleased to reach Him. Ameen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأخر دعواني الحمد لله رب العالمين
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب الجهنم ومن فتنة المحيا وما مات من شر فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم إنا نسألك للهدى والتقى والعفاف والغناء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من فتنة الحوائنا وشهواتنا آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم احفظ الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة